Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings and listen with care. I got it. Oh, after residence. Uh, hello. I need to speak with Lorelai. Nairns. We are Nairns. Oh, of course. Mm, in regards to? Uh, oh, is that her? I had to walk into town and... I, I, I'm old. You put her on the telephone. Tell her it's Jack from from up in the holler. Oh, oh, I heard about you. Pa said you and him used to run together, moonshining. Is this pistol? Oh, you sound all grown up. Yeah, your father said Eugene was keeping you safe. Said we'd be a bad influence. <laughs> yeah, sounds like he was right. <laughs> Eugene? Oh, yeah, real stand-up guy. Who the hell are you talking about, boy? It's... Hey! <laughs> Who is this? He's Jack, girl. It's your father. He's missing. For all my sins, God denies me to heaven. On Judgment Day, Mama, won't you cry? Cause if there will be justice in heaven, try and tears my muckles, I'll be fine. I was born in a shack made of mud and wood. Twenty other people hanging from one spoon. There was no water and the money was wet. At times we're hard even to say a prayer. Well, I for all my sins, God denies me to heaven. On judgment day, mama, won't you cry? Cause if there will be justice in heaven, dry your tears, mama, cause I'll be fine. The smell of pine needles grinding up underneath your truck is taking you back to your childhood. Through the cracked windshield, you see the shack, still ringed with your father's rusted collection of oddities, piled up in the knee-high grass like forgotten offerings to this old place. The old bastard said he'd clear all these things out, but of course he never did. I'm driving. Like hell you are. (laughs) Move over. Give me the keys. Over my dead body. I pull out a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Pistol is definitely staying out of this. He's been through this many times. <laughs> Never mess with a girl with a lot of sisters. Fact. <laughs> I'm sitting shotgun, though. <laughs> Maybe you took turns driving to keep the peace, but none of that matters now as the truck rolls up to the shack. There's an eerie quiet when you cut the engine. I've never seen it this quiet here. Pa! Probably dead drunk. He's not going to answer you. Dead drunk for four days? (laughs) It is Pa. Yeah, he went on a bender for two weeks after Ma died. All right, well, that that was because that that was a... Well, Lorelai, I've had just about enough of you. Now all you Tafts grew up in this place, and it's always served as an enduring sanctuary for the family, even if it isn't much to look at. If nothing else, it's a place to call home. The rough-hewn timbers of the walls are capped by a silvered wooden roof. A familiar stain runs down one side from the wood burner pipe that protrudes skyward. The rusted steel catches a tuneless whistle of the wind. That always makes you shiver. It's all so familiar, like you were here yesterday. The only thing missing from this memory is the old man. He's usually hollering about some damn thing or another. And he's been gone for four days now. At least as his neighbor Jack tells it to Lorelai. 
but you're still half expecting the old man to stumble out the front door at any moment. Instead, it bangs gently in the ill-fitting frame. I get out of the car and run in the open door. I follow. I'm going, shaking my head the whole way. I'm moseying after them. I'm not too worried. Blair leads the way into the shack with Pistol close behind. Lorelai and Faith are picking up the rear. The subtle smell of spoiled milk creeps up behind the choking dust that's swirling in the air. The main room is lined with sun-faded newspaper. Dusty, salvaged windows are the only source of light. Their lintels are lined with lucky objects that your father recovered over the decades. In the middle of the room sits the family table where you Tafts have fought, cried, and laughed together. Your father's hunting rifle rests on the tabletop next to a single bullet and an empty bottle reeking of moonshine. Smells worse than usual in here. (laughs) Uh, Can Pa really not be bothered to do his dishes these days? Did he ever? A rusting wood fireplace and stove fills the back corner of the room, flanked by two well-worn chairs. And those are surrounded by stacks of split wood, twisted up newspaper, and moldy, unwashed pans. There's also a rickety door to your father's bedroom, which is closed. I stare at the door, and what runs through Blair's head is that smell. The worst possible thing that it could possibly be is his body behind that door. I just look at it and I don't go towards it. Well, it's most likely he's in there, probably just passed out. I'm going to open the door. Faith and Pistol, cover your eyes. Seriously. (laughs) We are not your children, Lorelai. As much as you'd like to think so. I'm sorry. My name is Blair. Blair. (laughs) (laughs) Have I been gone so long? You can't even remember my name? (laughs) I misspoke. That just tells you who did all the real work around here. Lorelai, can we deal with the matter at hand? All of you are going to see Lorelai creak open the door and walk into the bedroom. The pungent smell of filth and illness pushes past you, Lorelai, as blue-green blowflies make their escape. These fat flies have clearly gorged on the room's contents, which include sweat-stained bedsheets crumpled on the floor and a crusty chamber pot that's been pushed aside, overturned. Its contents are mingling with a dropped meal and spilt milk. Ugh, so gross. Among the sheets, there's a box. Y'all can uncover your eyes now. We never covered them. We're adults, Jesus. I mean, I didn't. <clears throat> I, I was looking the whole time. <laughs> I started to cover my eyes, and then I, I needed to know. Pistol, are you ever going to listen to me? <laughs> what if it had been his body in there, Pistol? Well, it isn't, is it? Well, not this time. I'm already looking at this here box. Don't know what y'all are doing standing around fussing in the doorway. The box is twisted up in the sheets. When Lorelai picks it up, a photo falls and lands face up on the floor. It's a photo from your wedding to Eugene. Oh, didn't know he kept this. What's in the box, big sister? Got my wedding picture. Better times back then. There are other knickknacks and photos in the box, several handkerchiefs. You know he always has one at the ready. Can I take a moment to look around the room and check maybe wherever he keeps his clothes, maybe a dresser, a closet? Sure. He has a broken wardrobe in the corner. I rush to it. I'm hasty. I pull the drawers out. I'm ripping through stuff to make sure his favorite shirt. He wouldn't leave home without his favorite shirt. He didn't take much, that's clear. His favorite boots are still here. I hold them up and I look around at the other three. Oh, that's not good. 
Yeah, Paul would never leave without those. No way. No way. If he was drinking, he might not have thought of it. No, even when he was nearly passed out, he always had those boots on. Something's happened to Dad. And something bad. You know, I'm going to take Pa's lucky boots from the house so that when we find him, I can give them to him. Well, why do you think he was putting all these mementos in a box? I didn't take him to be quite so sentimental. Hmm. So, what we know, he's not here. He hasn't been seen. He's not wearing boots. Do you think somebody took him? Shit. Did he owe somebody money? He owes a lot of people money. Maybe someone finally figured out that he's making all that moonshine. Yeah, speaking of the moonshine business, how's that going, Pistol? It's fine, all right? I mean, it's been a little slow, but... Why can't you just get a regular job at the mines? Because I ain't good at that. Have you even tried? You know, you never give me credit for being as smart as I am. This is hard work, too, all right? And I'm good at it. I run the numbers. I'm... Well, if you're smart, you could come to school with me. You know I didn't go to school because we couldn't afford it. Well, if you got a real job, you could. This is hardly the time or the place to be arguing about schooling. Lorelai's got a point there. Thank you, Lorelai. <laughs> Fair. Well, I need some air. I'm gonna step outside. Smells like hell in here. Grab that hunting rifle on the table with the one bullet. Yeah, you can do that. No problem. I'm fighting the urge to clean things. <laughs> <laughs> Just standing there with my hands on my hips, shaking my head. Oh, I did need a woman to look after him. And I'll do one more look around the main room of the shack to see if there's anything else we might have overlooked. Yeah, I'll ask for a spot hidden from Lorelai. Okay. Extreme success, 13 under 75. You notice a couple of things as you walk out of the bedroom, scanning for cleaning supplies. In the faded newspaper that was spread along the walls, you can tell that one section isn't as faded and yellowed, which might indicate someone recently removed a layer. On a closer look at that area, you find an article about the search for Sadie Taft. You know she was your father's first wife, and you know that she was never found. The article details the search. Are any of us Sadie's children? No, you're Annabelle's children. Okay. On that extreme success, you'll notice that the door to the cast iron oven is open, and you spot the corner of a charred letter sticking out of the ashes. I'm going to get down on a, a knee and try and pull it out gently without damaging it. I've had to do this before. Faith tried to burn her homework a few times. <laughs> <laughs> To Mr. Carson Taft, we regret to inform you, and the rest is burnt away. I'll go out to Blair. Someone was writing Paul letters. Now who in the hell would want to write Paul a letter? They think they were going to get something back? No, there's something... We regret to inform you. It sounds like he was... It sounds like one of those death letters. Let me see that. Someone died. We ain't got no living relatives I know of. Your pa is 89 years old, and you lot are all he's got. Your mother Annabelle passed away, and you know she's buried out back. Pa's lonely, and you don't visit enough. Cuppy, would Pistol know of any secret room where Pa would hide his moonshine? You know there's a loose floorboard, and Pa keeps his stash under there. I'm gonna pry open that board. Yeah, he's done this so many times that it's easy enough to pull up with your bare hands. You find two bottles of moonshine down there. And it's not like a large enough space that anyone could hide in or anything like that. It's not that big, no. Okay. He was keeping something else down here, maybe cheese. 
Gosh, it might smell worse than the bedroom. Oh, what is that? I'm going to open up the window. And you see someone slink through the backyard and behind the outhouse. Oh, I'll run out toward the back. Pistol darts right by Blair and Lorelai, who were already outside. Following our boy Pistol. Pistol, slow down. You're going to break an ankle. Pa? Pa? Yeah, I ran out after him, too. You're all going to find your father's neighbor, Jack, hovering by the outhouse. He has whispers of blue veins and liver spots that are kind of vying for dominance on his almost translucent skin. He's very fragile looking, very wrinkled. Jack, don't be shitting in our outhouse. You got your own. Oh, 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 you're finally here. Oh, finally. All right, Jack. How long's he been gone? Oh, must be four or five days now. Uh, he knows these woods, and, and they know him, but I'm worried. Oh, uh, but, but look here now. You kids all grown up. Uh, you make me feel my age. <laughs> we ain't kids no more, Jack. Uh, any of you heard from the old bastard? Well, no, Jack, that's why we all jumped in the truck about as fast as we could. Uh, do you know any bad news he might have gotten recently? Uh, bad news? No, I don't rightly do. But he's been chewing on some decision or other. Uh, having a hard time with it lately. A hard time? What do you mean a hard time? Uh, he's been bringing up Sadie again. Uh, you know, his first wife. Uh, it's never good when he starts down that road of rumination. Why is he talking about her? She disappeared eons ago. Oh, you know, they used to fight like cats and dogs, but I don't know why she's come up again. It's been half a damn century, you know. No, we don't know. Tell us about this woman. We don't know anything about her. Yeah, he never talked about her, ever. Oh, uh, not much to talk about. Uh, it feels like another lifetime. It was a big hubbub. All the churches got involved searching these here woods for her. I don't know. They found nothing. Then people started to talk. Rumors and such. Uh, it took a long time for those to die down. Uh, folks say a witch took her. <laughs> Can you believe that? A witch. I'm the closest thing to a witch that's ever lived in these parts. That's true. Ah, <laughs> uh, fairy tales. Uh, you know, things we tell kids to make them go to bed. Are we searching for your father? Because I'm ready to go. <laughs> Excuse me. Jack, why'd Paul start looking for Sadie after all these years? He, he s never talked about her when we was kids. Even after Ma died, he never said anything. Why, why would he start now? Did he hear something? Did he, did he get some news? Do you know anything about what made him start looking now? Oh, he's getting on in years. He's changed over the last couple of them. Hey, you'd have noticed if you'd visited it. Maybe he's sentimental. Is that a subtle dig at us, Jack? Sentimental ain't a word we ever associated with Pa. No, he's not the sentimental type. Well, now, hold on. Maybe not outwardly, but he does keep your wedding photo in that box, Lorelai. That means something. Uh, I don't know why he's obsessed with Sadie, but maybe he went off into the steels. I'll show you the way. I've got nothing better to do. And I was afraid to go out on my own. <laughs> you, you may not have noticed, but I'm getting up there in years myself. You're spry as a grasshopper, Jack. I'm going to walk up to Faith quietly and just say, Hey, sis, remember that story I told you when I was picking up those kegs to take to Baxter? And I thought I saw, like, something in the forest watching me? Yeah, and I told you you was drunk. I, I was, all right, but I'm just getting that weird feeling again. 
like maybe it wasn't the booze. I don't know. I don't know. Just getting a feeling. All right. Keep your eyes open, then. Someone is walking up the way you drove in. Lorelai, you'll recognize Nora from the clinic. Hey. Who's that woman over there coming up the drive? Lorelai's already yelling, just ignoring Faith. Nora. Nora. Nora waves and picks up her pace. Oh, hi, Lorelai. Is your pa home? No, he ain't been seen for a couple days. We're looking for him. You seen him? Oh, I thought maybe a little family reunion. (laughs) I haven't seen him, no. Not recently. Nor pleasure to meet you, Blair Hunter Taft. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? Nice to meet you too, Blair. I've heard all about you. I've heard all about all of you from your father. I'm Nora Baker. How do you know Daddy? Oh, well, you know, he comes into town from time to time. Stops by the clinic if he needs medicine, things like that. Has he been having any trouble lately? Medically? Oh, I think... I think maybe I... Oh, gosh. It is not my place. Just spit it out. We all can take it. Well, Carson... I mean, your father... 89 is a ripe old age. I mean, that is one hell of a time on God's green earth. But I'm afraid the doc thinks he's dying. Dying? Our father? Nothing can kill Carson Taft. Mm -mm. He's gonna outlive us all. I'm sure he'll fight as long as he can. What they say he was dying of? Your father's seen his fair share of illness. Black lung, white finger, I mean, you name it. Yeah, but he beat all those things. He did, but, I mean, time takes its toll. It wears you down and sends us all back to the mud. When did the doctor say this? I heard about it from your father, actually. He came to me asking for a favor. When? When'd you see him? Oh, two weeks back? He wanted me to bring him some silly things. He was looking for, you know, protection. (laughs) I don't know. Protection from what? Jack takes notice of your conversation and approaches the group. Ah, no, 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 no. She's talking about that granny magic. Ah, I know this woman. Come on now, Jack. That's not fair. No. Now you leave him be, Nora. Don't you start with that superstitious nonsense. Can't you see they're suffering? It's a difficult time here. If you filled Carson's head with ideas about Sadie... Uh, oh, you did, didn't you? I can see it in your eyes. I'm going to cock the hunting rifle, even though I've already pulled back the hammer, and say, Nora, you better tell us everything you know about granny magic right now. Jesus, God. Our Lord who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, Nora, excuse my sister. She's got a bit of an authority problem, as in she thinks she's the authority on everything. I don't mean no harm, okay? Here, I have this brooch. Your father was just looking for something to, to stay safe in the woods. He He thinks there's something lurking out there. In the woods? I put down the rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a witch? Maybe. <sighs> yeah, something like that. Nora, did Pa say anything about Sadie? Yeah, in fact, he did. He was trying to make things right. You know, I wasn't even sure he had his wits about him, to be honest. Hmm. Ah, uh, come on. There's no need to listen to this woman. Jack, shut your mouth for once. God, I feel terrible now that he's gone. See, I was supposed to bring these things about a week ago, but things got so busy at the clinic. And I thought it was just the ramblings of an old man. What did he want you to bring, Nora? Oh, this here. 
she hands you a carved brooch shaped like a horn. What was this for? It's just something I have. They said protection against dark things and magic. I don't know if it's anything, honestly. Just just something you have. Where did you get it? Well, it was my grandmother's. She held on to a lot of the old ways, like your father. He liked his lucky trinkets, didn't he? You can have it. But he did promise me a bottle of his famous moonshine. Oh, hey, I'll go get you a bottle of moonshine. I'll run and grab one of those bottles underneath the board and bring it back out. Yeah, and as you're going into the house, Pistol, Jack trails you a bit. Oh, you know, uh, he owes me five dollars. Well, I don't got five dollars, Jack. I got moonshine or nothing. Pistol, I'm coming with you. I gotta look for something. Uh, I want to follow Pistol inside and check the lucky items in the windowsill and see if I notice any of his favorites missing. Ooh, good idea. Give me an intelligence check. Okay. Well, Blair, Blair's not too intelligent. Here we go. That's a fail. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you see all these things he's collected over the years lined up, but it's really hard to tell if there's anything missing because it's not orderly. You do notice that they're facing outward. Strange. Did you get that moonshine? I did. But, Blair, before we go outside, before we get to the others, um, do, do you think... Paul was like dabbling in magic. So that doesn't really feel like Paul to me, but something ain't right. Well, I don't know if you remember too much about Ma. You were pretty young when she passed, but she had her own sort of spirit within her. She chose to believe all kinds of things. Paul never seemed to take much interest, but maybe he started thinking back. I don't know. Hmm. Come on, let's get on out there. All right, let's go. And Pistol? Mm-hmm. I know you work hard. I'm sorry I'm hard on you sometimes. I know you're just looking out, sis. You know I am. Give him a punch in the shoulder. <laughs> uh, did you... Did you find my five dollars? I look, no five dollars. Sorry. Ah, uh, well, I guess I'll take some hooch then. That's Norris, Hooch. You keep your hands off that Hooch. Um, you help us find Paul. I'll find five dollars for you, though. Uh, all right. It's a deal. I'll take that bottle, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> Who's holding the horned brooch? You can pass that to anyone. Faith, uh, I think you've got the most delicate hands. I don't see a single uh, callus on them, so how about you hold on to this? <laughs> All right, I'll take good care of it. Thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. Well, I need to head on back to the clinic. It was nice meeting the rest of you, finally. Lorelai, Nora pulls you in a bit closer. Uncomfortably close. I can tell you where the shack is. Where I think you went. Where the witch lives, if you want to know. Of course I want to know what's my paw. All right. Well, you head into the undergrowth towards the mountains and look for an uprooted tree. You'll see a small pet cemetery there. Go around and then to the right, and the shack is an hour's walk from there. You'll feel it when you're getting close. Well, that don't sound ominous at all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll feel the shack. Okay. She points to that horned brooch. You, especially. Nora, are you saying that you've dealt with this witch woman before? Dealt with? Oh, no, not me. But I have referred some to her doorstep. I don't care for it myself, but when all else fails, the desperate look for any hope they can clutch onto. All right, I eye her suspiciously. Why does she know so much about where this cabin is? <laughs> My pa used to take me back there, 
to play and hunt? No. As soon as she says hunt, I relax. Oh, right, I could trust that. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't know where it is, Blair. I do know where it is. I just don't like to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I never played over there. I got a creepy feeling, a shiver down my spine any time I took a ride at the pet cemetery. Well, I'm sure you'll be fine. Have a safe hike. And give your father my best when you find him. I'll be at the clinic if he needs any care. Well, before we go into these woods, I think we need to go back inside and look for some more ammunition. One bullet's not going to do us much good. Oh, I do have a rifle. I forgot. It's in the truck. Are you telling me Pistol has a rifle? <laughs> and he would have ammunition for that rifle. Yes. Well, Pistol, you better be prepared to share. Jack impatiently extends his arm out toward the woods. Are we done here? Uh, we best get moving. We're wasting a lot. If you can keep up with us, Jack. You know, you're the most indelicate of all of us. I don't know how, but you made it this long. It's because I know this place. Yeah, you might want to watch your step. He follows a narrow trail that leads into the pines of the holler. I'm going to be looking around to see if there's anything watching us or any unfriendly eyes, anything like that, because several people have now mentioned feeling like they've been watched in the woods. Lorelai stays vigilant. It takes about half an hour to reach the thick undergrowth where more ancient things grow. Cyclopean trees with their roots anchored deep, drinking from the black earth of the mountains. Their canopies yawn wide, shading the floor from a blinding morning sun. And the long cast shade is chilling. Give me a spot hidden for Lorelai. Alrighty. It's one of the few things I'm good at. And I still failed it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. You do kind of get that chill of being back in the woods the way you did when you were a child. But you're not seeing anything. It's just a little eerie. Y'all, feels really uncomfortable out here. Yeah, you're telling me. Ah, uh, these woods build character, Lorelai. Come on, keep up. Character? Sound like my ma. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your father was a character, was he not? What do you mean, was? I I'm, I'm not sure I like your phrase in there, Jack. What do you mean, was? I cock my rifle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, li listen, kids. I don't mean to assume the worst. He's, he's just, he's been gone for days now, right? Any more references to Pa should be made in the present tense, all right? Uh, all right. All right, look, I don't have the schooling that Faith does, see? I don't either, but I'm not going to talk about Paul like he's dead. I put down the rifle. <laughs> <laughs> he's searching the ground, maybe for tracks. You looking for animals, Jack? Uh, no, I'm looking for feet. Your father's footprints. Can I try to help with that? I have a... Uh, oh, no, I don't have track. Never mind. You're all welcome to try a tracking roll, even if you're not skilled in that. Okay. Half the fun is rolling things that you're bad at. Oh, no, I got a three. <laughs> That's a hard success. <laughs> you know you're bad at something when three is not an extreme success. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I fumbled. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love that. Lorelai with 100. Let's start with you. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. While everyone in the family is searching the area, looking for tracks, Jack is doing the same a little farther out. Lorelai, you've wandered a bit, following what might be human footprints. You're deeper into the undergrowth than your siblings as you're trying to pick up your father's tracks. And as you kneel down close to the ground, trying to move away some leaves, something brushes against you. It strokes the back of your head your hair, and then you hear leaves rustling as it scampers off deeper into the woods. Ah! What's wrong, Lorelai? Something touched me. What kind of something? I don't know, it's just... It, 
touch my hair and I heard it running away. It was probably just a squirrel or a little bird or something. I don't know any squirrels and birds that like to touch the back of people's hats. It probably fell out of a tree. It's the woods. If it fell out of a tree, it would have like landed on me or something. Not just like brush my hair real creepy like like Eugene does. Oh my God. <laughs> you think your husband stroking your hair is creepy? <laughs> you ain't felt the way he does it. <laughs> I knew y'all had some problems, but uh, that that seems to be number one. <laughs> is why I never married. I think all men are creepy. <laughs> I think maybe y'all need to sit down and, and talk a little bit, work some stuff out. <laughs> I want Eugene to show up now. <laughs> So I will say, since Lorelai called attention to this, you could all try for a hard spot hidden roll. Regular success. Success. I could spend five luck. Regular success. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend five luck. Pistol, there's a shadow moving behind one of the bushes deeper into the woods. You see it rustling about 30 yards away. I'm going to aim my rifle... Yo, there's something there. Pistol, you're jumping at shadows now. <laughs> it's just a just a turkey vulture or something. See, I told you it weren't no squirrel. What the hell is that? Y'all, look. Uh, I look. <laughs> the movement dies down. I want to sneak up on whatever it is and uh, kind of poke the bush uh, once I get there, after trying not to crunch leaves on my way. Okay, hold on. Blair thinks men are creepy and wants to poke the bush. <laughs> I think you know everything you need to know about Blair. <laughs> oh, dear. Becca, could you give me a hard stealth roll for Blair sneaking up? Oh, sure can. Oh. I'll spin nine luck. I'm not afraid. Yeah. Okay, you tiptoe across the leaves, making your way over to this bush that is now rustling gently. What are you doing when you get there? I am going to just like belly flop onto the entire bush. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) Out of nowhere. I'm trying to hold whatever is in or around the bush where it is. I want to grab something. (laughs) Sounds like a normal day for Blair. (laughs) Give me a dexterity roll for Blair. (gasps) Hard success. Yes! Okay, you belly flop onto this bush and smother something that was crouching behind it. You can wrestle it to the ground. And it's a person. Is it a person? With stark white skin and overly long limb bones, hollow facial features, it's trying to free itself with these clawed hands. The slender fingers reach up around your arm. It squirms and struggles against you. Help me out, everybody, quick! I caught something! I'll run over with my rifle and, like, point it right at it. I need your hands, not your gun! Well, if it gets away, I'm going to shoot it. I'll run over and try to help her hold on to it. Okay. Both of you give me strength rolls just to see how well you're doing. I got a regular success. Oh, fail. <laughs> Jack calls back from further ahead. Hey, now, what are, you, what are you up to back there? You found something? Everyone's ignoring Jack, but even with Faith's help, It thrashes and fights with mangled limbs. Press down into the leaves, you get a good look. It looks human, but ill and deformed. But longer limbs and paper white skin. If I look into its eyes, what color are they? They're gray. What the fuck? Who are you? Lorelai, come see what's been stroking your hair. (laughs) I come wandering over, plant my hands on my hips. 
Who the hell are you? What you going around touching women's hair for? That's creepy behavior. It's writhing and fighting recklessly against Blair's grip. Help from anyone would be useful. I don't ask for a lot. Should I shoot it or should... I don't know what to do, sis. It is going to attempt to attack Blair just to get free, thrashing hard. Faith, you have the first action. I'm going to try to stab it with my knife. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Partly because I didn't even know you had a knife. (laughs) <laughs> Give me a fighting brawl roll, and this thing will fight back. That early success is, has just doomed me. <laughs> As Faith brings the knife down to stab at this creature, it claws your forearm, throwing the blade off to the side down into the leaves. That takes, oh God, four points of damage from Faith. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Your arm is bleeding from raking claws. This is excruciating, and the creature's writhing more wildly now. This thing doesn't even have hygiene. Look at those nails. <laughs> Lorelai acts next. Can I try and help hold it down? Give me a strength roll. Okay. Strength's not great. Yeah, I failed that. Lorelai moves to help pin it down to prevent it from doing further damage, but... It's not working. It continues to fight against Blair's grip, and on its action, it's going to attack Blair with a clawed hand. Would you like to dodge this or try to fight back? Oh, you know I'm fighting it back. (laughs) I knew, but I wanted to give you the courtesy of asking. (laughs) And it's actually failed its attack. (laughs) So did I. (laughs) It's twisting to get up, but every time it does that, you're able to force it back down into the leaves. No, you don't. And it's pistol next in the order. Jack's finally making his way back to check on the commotion. What is with you lot? There is no time for hunting. Jack, what is this thing? He's walking toward you, angling around the bush here, while pistol does what? I'm going to take that gun and just stick it right in this thing's face and pull the trigger (gasps) okay wow yeah (laughs) it's hurting my sisters since you're right there at close range i'll let you roll with two bonus dice all right that is a that is a success The explosion soaks Blair and splatters Faith with blood and brains. Ugh. <coughs> oh. Ugh. This thing is truly dead. Its grip on Blair goes slack. Oh, Jesus Christ. What did you do? Looks like we got dinner. Ew. Yeah, everyone give me a sanity check. Uh Uh-oh. Success. Fail. Failed that. (laughs) Fail. (laughs) Everyone who failed, everyone but Danny, give me a D6 for sanity loss. Five. Six. Whoa. Blair lost three. Ooh, give me an intelligence roll for Lorelai. I get about a madness. <laughs> <laughs> and Cam, give me an intelligence roll for Faith as well. Fail. So Faith is going to have some involuntary reaction to this, a response to the utter terror at seeing this thing's head blown off right in front of you. Faith is frozen in fear. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raina, unless you'd like me to do it, I will let you decide your bout of madness. Lorelai just starts laughing hysterically and can't figure out why she's laughing, but it just seems so bizarre and so weird. And this is the kind of stuff she tried to get away from, and here she is back in it. Lorelai, look at me. You see that thing? <laughs> oh, God, it's so, it's so horrible. Lorelai! Hey, hey Lorelai! <laughs> Lorelai, what the hell is wrong with you? It, it ain't funny. 
<laughs> oh, it ain't funny, but I can't stop laughing about it. <laughs> Am I going to have to do that thing? <laughs> what thing? <sighs> I slap her. <laughs> <laughs> I slap her back while still laughing hysterically. <laughs> I slap her again. <laughs> We're not little girls anymore. I'm trying to snap you out of this. Hell, you two haven't changed much, have you? So strong-willed. But how's this helping anyone? It's time to start accepting things are changing. For all of us. Lorelai, you're going to have more control over your laughing fit. Your cheek is stinging. Uh, Pistol, what you going shooting that thing for? It hurt Faith. Yeah, we don't know what it was. It looked like a person. You might have just murdered somebody. That thing certainly wasn't a person. It's all right, Lorelai. It could have been. Might have drunk the wrong moonshine or something. <laughs> oh, moonshine don't make you look like that. Don't go shooting things up close like that in the future, Pistol. Look, I was just looking out for my twin. I'd do the same for either of you as well. Yeah, I'm going to like rip off part of my shirt and try to like bandage Faith's wounds. Okay, give me a first aid roll to stop the bleeding. Oof. Sorry, sis, it's still bleeding. It it helps a little bit. You did your best. The effort was a comfort. It brings you out of your shock. Are you feeling all right? Does it hurt? It hurts, but I'll be all right. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. What y'all think? Should we bring it? I, I don't want to be carrying around something like that. No. Oh, would you rather leave it here? But what if we roast it? I mean, I, there's not much muscle, and it's stringy looking, but it is something for dinner. <laughs> You're kidding, right? And it looks too much like people. You get prissier every day. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm not eating that. All right, then I'll hide it. Becca, give me a luck roll to see how well hidden this is. Hard success. Yeah, you shove this thing into the bush and it's barely noticeable. You don't know how many things I've hidden down in those coal mines. (laughs) (laughs) We have to talk later, sis. Everyone who wants to can give me a spot hidden. See if you noticed anything while Blair was hiding the body. Hard success for Pistol. Fail for Blair. And Cam, is that a success? Yes. Woo! Faith and Pistol, you're going to notice that the body is wearing some kind of article of clothing, like a filthy rag draped over it. And there's something tucked into that. You saw it as Blair dragged it into the bush. I will grab it out of wherever it's tucked in. Yeah, it's the corner of what looks like a photograph. Okay, what kind of photograph? It's a photo of the four of you when you were children, playing in one of those makeshift forts outside of the shack. What. The. Fuck. I hand it to whoever's closest to me. I'm actually, uh, 22 years older, so uh, I'd just like to point out that I am super hot and young in this photo. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's going to be the first thing that strikes everyone when they see it. Oh, look at you, Blair. Damn. The minds really change you. Wait a minute. What? Why does this thing have a picture of us? Uh, Is the second thing I notice. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and as you hand it off, Faith, you notice on the back the word family is written. You don't think that was Pa, do you? No. No, that was not Pa. Absolutely not. Right as Pistol says that, and you're all looking at the photo, you do recognize your father's broken handwriting. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Cup, no! It could have been Pa. I looked in its eyes and I didn't see an ounce of father. Absolutely not. I think this thing took this photo from Pa. I think it means we're on the right track. I think it also means he's in trouble. Right. He was looking through his photos, so he would probably have taken them with him. 
whatever was in that box that Ma left him. And this thing wasn't friendly to us, so it was definitely looking for us, and not in a good way. During this discussion, Pistol notices from the earlier tracking success, fresh footprints. Looks like bare feet. Do they look like they would fit inside of these boots that I'm carrying? Oh, good call. You can put one of those boots down right on top, and sure enough, it's a match. Pa has been this way. Yeah, that's his lazy toe. (laughs) One toe's like off to the side. (laughs) Lead the way, Pistol. Uh, And I want to kind of walk and talk with Pistol for a second and say, I think you did the right thing back there. It was a tough call to make. Thanks, sis. I I was having doubts, and thank you for saying that, because I just wanted to look out for y'all. I know you're looking out. Appreciate it. I think Lorelai's mad at me, but once we find Pa, this will all be all right, right? That's right. And I think Lorelai's just, you know, mad in the head, more than mad at you. Okay. That was a lot for her. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I can hear you, you know. (laughs) What? No, we were whispering. I raised you two, looking at Pistol and Faith. You think I can't hear a whisper? All right. I was just saying I'm sorry that you're mad at me, and I I just I just want you all to be safe and know that I love you, okay? All right, enough of this mushy gushy hee haw. <laughs> Jack's going to scurry forward to walk with Pistol and Blair. Uh love that he scurries. There are bad, terrible things out here. Your posture to come this way put us all at risk like this. You know, nothing good's going to come out of going this way. But, Jack, you know, <laughs> Pa don't care about nobody but Pa unless it's convenient. Uh, I don't think he gave two thoughts at, as to who would come after him looking for him. Oh, I don't know. I felt like he cared about it. At least 50% of you kids. That's sweet. Thanks, Jack. Well, we know he didn't come out here of his own volition. He came out here without his boots. Somebody dragged him out here. I don't know about that. He didn't intend us to come to no harm. Come on now. Maybe he was sleepwalking. That that could be true. I mean, he probably was pretty drunk. Maybe he was visiting Ma in the backyard and just saw something. You just always have to make it creepy, don't you, Blair? As you continue your march through the woods, you hear an echoing wail all around you. A moaning which seems not quite human. Y'all hear that? What was that? Will you listen to that? I did say these woods aren't safe, didn't I? Come on, we best be on our way. Yeah, I'm going to follow behind Pistol because he seems to really have a hold on these tracks. Following the prince, your group approaches a rotting, uprooted tree that's almost serving as the wall for a pet graveyard. This is a small collection of plots, 20 graves or so, all dated between 1880 and 1925. There are no names on the markers, and those dates are crudely painted onto the surface of makeshift headstones. Ma used to take me out here when I was a little girl, and she'd make up stories about the the polar bears and the gators that were buried here. Yeah, your mother. She was a comforting soul to anyone that needed a mother. Treated them all like family, no matter who you dragged back with you after playing in the woods. Ma really was the best. She was. Everybody looking at these small grave sites can give me intelligence checks. I failed. I got an extreme 245. Amazing. Lorelai, you're the first to notice that the handwriting for those dates looks like your father's handwriting. Well, most of them. Not the recent ones. Uh, y'all, this is this is Pa's handwriting. What the? Who was he burying out here? 
dogs and cats, you know. Oh, that's kind of sweet when you think about it. Is it, though? We only had the two dogs and the one cat that showed up and Ma chased away. What was he burying out here? Anybody got a shovel? We can find out. You know I love to dig in a grave, Faith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I have a... About the size of a hand kind of spade. Now, what would you want to dig up poor animals for? I know, you're the Tafts, but... I know this seems cruel. Let, let sleeper dogs lie. I'll help Blair. Oh, okay. Jack throws his hands up and stalks away as you ignore him. You're welcome to unearth whatever's in one of these graves, but it's going to take time, even with the spade and your helpers. Yeah, I'm just the, the freshest looking one on the closest to the end of a row. I, I'm just going to start digging in one spot straight down. Fortunately, it's not that deep, and the point of the shovel hits something hard. Rock? Maybe bone. Bingo, bango. What are you expecting to find? Whatever it is, I think I found it. And I'm going to reach in and try and pull out whatever hard thing. Yeah, so you can pull at it and sweep away some of the dirt with your gloved hand. And this is a long bone. A polar bear skull. <laughs> what? The bones are all twisted and mangled. This is a strange thing as you unearth more of it. Help me keep on covering these bones, y'all. There's something here. Yeah, I think once you have it mostly exposed, the skeleton looks humanoid. And gnarled bones and joints are going to remind you of that thing pistol shot in the head. What's that doing being buried in a pet cemetery? One with Pa's handwriting on the gravestones. Maybe he was getting rid of them because they're dangerous. See, that's a sensible answer. That's what we sent you to school for. Are you finished being ghouls? Let's be away from here. I'm forging on. I think we've seen the all there is to see here. Wait up, Pistol. As Blair stands up from this desecrated grave, Becca, give me a spot hidden just to see if she notices anything else. Fail. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm going to spend 10 luck because this is a one shot, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Curiosity is getting the best of Blair. And as your siblings move on, you dig a little bit more. Even after you have a good sense of the size and shape of the skeleton. And you do find something. It's dirty, but something that doesn't look like bones pokes up from the dirt. It looks furry. What in the hell? Uh, I, I keep digging out around it. I grab a hold of whatever pelt I can see and I yank. You pull this thing up and it's tattered, barely holding together at all. It's a stuffed bear that Faith used to play with. Faith, wait. Is this... Mr. Tupper's? It looks like Mr. Tupper's. I mean, it's real dirty, but it looks like it. Why would he bury it here? That is the strangest thing. I, I, I can't think of a single reason. Maybe he kept this thing as a pet. He wanted to give it something cuddly. Maybe. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense if his mind was starting to go. I'm bringing it with us. Well, it is ours, after all. Doesn't belong to that thing. We're just taking what's ours. Add Mr. Tupper's to your inventory. <laughs> On it. <laughs> Do you think his first wife's the witch? And, like, these are their weird, twisted children or something? Like in that fairy tale Mama used to read us? Sadie tapped, I do declare. Well, look at the dates. Do the dates coincide? 
with when she disappeared? Sadie disappeared 45 years ago. They're after the disappearance. All of the dates. No, I don't... I, look at the dates. I don't, I don't think they could be their children. Well, I'm, I mean, it's after she disappeared. Maybe he was keeping her out in the house in the woods because she was a witch woman and didn't want Holler finding out about it. You don't just lock them up in the woods and have monster babies. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Paul needs us. Let's go. I follow Pistol. You make your way out of the cemetery, trudging past Jack, who stands there in silent judgment. He meets each of your eyes as you go. The thickets grow dense now, and it's hard to move forward following an overgrown animal trail. After about 15 minutes, you need to push through large briar bushes. Jack follows behind, quietly. Hope y'all wore boots. I got paws. Anyone needs them. Which reminds me, you are picking up more of his footprints in this direction. They cut right through the thickets. If we're worried about time, then I think we just got to press on as direct as possible. Uh, yeah. I'm with Pistol. Let's keep on moving forward. Okay, everyone give me a strength check to pass through. Success for Blair. Extreme success. Oh, nice. Faith can jump over. <laughs> <laughs> Dribbling blood over the brambles. I leap. <laughs> <laughs> leap of faith. <laughs> Lorelai, you may be a little jealous seeing how graceful this is. Yeah, well, I failed it anyway. Pistol and Blair, you fight your way through. It is a struggle, but you're able to make it to the other side intact. Lorelai, this is slow going for you. You do take tearing damage from these briar thickets. And it's going to be two points of damage. You're bleeding from your calf. I'm not having a good day, y'all. A miniskirt was not the right choice of attire for a romp through the woods. Well, I didn't know we were going in the woods now, did I, Blair? As Lorelai is hung up in the thickets, Jack stops, but he doesn't help. He studies you closely. His demeanor seems to have changed. Yes, Jack. See something you lack? <laughs> huh? Oh, no, no, no. Give me a power roll for Lorelai. Oh, God, why did we bring Jack? I got a hard success. <laughs> I rolled a hundred. <laughs> and you fumbled. You, you got a critical fail. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Jack takes in another long look at Lorelai before he flickers. You see a glimpse of root-bound earth. Black veins undulate as they shift. The roots clutch and grab at falling clay, all pulling and binding into the form of Jack. Y'all, I think Jack might be a haint. A what? He ain't what? A haint. You know, like a, a ghost or a spirit or something. Uh, Jack? W w if, when the rest of us look, do, what do we see? With the fumble, you all see it. A writhing tangle of rotting roots and ink-black veins. It fights to hold its form, sculpting itself into Jack. His eyes are the only sign of humanity left as it leers at Lorelai. Then they too flicker, replaced with boils like pus-filled blisters, the pupils shifting behind a thin membrane. Lorelai, get on the other side of the thicket now. I'm trying, I'm trying. And I aim the rifle at Jack. What are you? Shoot him, Pistol. No, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. Jack, you feeling all right? I'm just fine, Blair, let's just get moving. Don't be shooting a hate. You don't want to be angering the hates. Pistol, you point your wavering gun at this thing, which was Jack, as its roots squirm against the wet mud of its form. Losing the struggle, parts drop wetly to the ground, crumbling. It loses its human shape, falling among the briar thickets. 
A smoldering black smoke swirls leaves and insects. Clumps of earth and clay churn inside, flaking into hot cinders which are swept up by the breeze. What in the hell happened to Jack? I, I, I don't think that was Jack. I think there was something else. Uh, there's something weird going on here. Told you he's a haint. What if that was always Jack? Some kind of witch spirit or something. Well, they say you pay the spirits with liquor. We should have just gone ahead and given him that moonshine. We told you there's moonshine in this for y- you. The roots twist and contract as greasy smoke, cinders, and ash swirl up from this hideous form high into the canopy. A baleful whale builds in the surrounding wood, causing birds to take flight. All seem drawn, flustered and confused to within Jack's reach. The pulsating veins strike out and pull birds inside the mud and clay, new material for its failing form. Everyone give me a sanity check for what you're witnessing. All right. Fail for Blair. Hard pass. Oh, pistol failed. I failed. Faith is holding up reasonably with one point of sand loss. But everyone else give me a D8. Oh, only one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> nice. Six for pistol. Just one for me, too. I think I kind of st- startle back. Blair drops the rifle. Dropping this rifle is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to Blair. (laughs) (laughs) Danny, give me an intelligence check for pistol. Oh, it's a good thing I'm not as smart as I say I am. (laughs) You avoid a bout of madness, but finding Pa has become that much more urgent for you. Pistol runs off deeper into the woods. Oh, 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 there he goes. Uh, uh, pistol, wait up. And I sprint after him. I do too. Jack's body is torn open, sending gouts of smoke corkscrewing upward. More hapless sparrows are snatched up, fed frantically into the now exposed infernal innards of this terrible thing. Muddy clumps bake and fall away, letting the fire reach the wet growths which whine like rotten fruit thrown on hot coals. The tangled ganglia burn to ashen motes which flit away on the winds. All that is left is the cooked clay shape of Jack, crumbling to dust. You are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody. For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Or subscribe to Ain't Slayed Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits, and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you and good luck out there.